Hello everybody and welcome to another toy review. I purchased this little beauty from Hobby Link Japan. Some of you may not have any idea what this product is. This is based on a program that I used to watch in the 90s called Samurai Pizza Cats. Not really things you would usually think to put together, samurais, pizzas and cats. But uh, these guys actually liked pizza even more so than the turtles. It was also called, excuse my pronunciation, uh, Himitsu Ninja Tai Niyaki. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, that was the Japanese. We got it in the Western world and we called it Samurai Pizza Cats. Because why not? The Samurai Pizza Cats consisted of a team of three felines. We had Speedy Ceviche, Polly Ether. <laughs> and Guido Anchovy. Yeah. He was kind of their equivalent of Mikey from the Turtles. Now in each episode they would be presented by some sort of villain who would use a giant mech to try and destroy Little Tokyo. And uh, basically this is the Samurai Pizza Cat's very own mech uh, called the Neo King, or as the Pizza Cats called it, the Supreme Catatonic. Now enough of me rambling, let's take a quick look around the box. Very nice artwork on the front there. We've got this lovely gold font. On the inside of the sleeve, we have actual pictures of him in his bot and his Sphinx mode. Side of the box, we have the Sphinx again. And on the back of the box, we've got various different poses. We've got your various warnings. And this is brought to us by Action Toys. It's the ESPC DX01. Without further ado, let's crack him open. Right, here we have him out of his package. We get a very nice card-like instructions. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy to follow. And we get two-tier system for his actual casing. Now I have had this out of the packet, already played with it. Uh, it does come in like a cellophane wrap as well, just to protect him inside the actual plastic clamshell. But if we just lift this off, we also get a secondary clamshell with the alternative hands. We get open palms, we get kind of open hands, we get closed fists with uh, holes. And then we get kind of a trigger finger get those we get the fish crossbow we get the uh was it an anchovy i think it was uh, it was the fish anyway which forms part of the staff and we get the additional section which forms the wheels for the sphinx mode so let's take a closer look all right first of all let's get the actual sphinx base on we've got this nice cat footprint section these tab in on here and then this underside if you just come to here we have this crotch piece section and that is just going to line up and slide in and this then supports the sphinx mode nicely let's take a look at the fish first um yeah it's exactly what it says on the tin what you need to do you need to just remove the head and we remove the tail we then push all of these pieces upwards and we can put this to one side. It's made out of a very nice solid plastic with really nice crisp paint applications. Next up, we get the uh, base of the staff. Again, just got a nice gold tip on there. It is literally just that. It's literally just the base of a staff. We have two slots. We can then bring in these. There's corresponding grooves on the inside. That's just going to slide in push until it's in like so and then we can just bring in the top piece of the staff just plug that in and push these up and there we go there we have his staff which can be used in his robot mode Unfortunately, there's not really much we can do with the fish <laughs> once once we've taken those pieces off we get the fish crossbow. Now, this is somewhat elasticated, but it is just plastic. So if anything's going to break on this set, I would imagine it would be this piece here or possibly these tail fins. They are very thin and very sharp indeed. But as far as uh, giant fish crossbows go, <laughs> it's pretty nice. This here is the handle which we have the corresponding 
hand, it just slides inside these hands. It doesn't go all the way in, it just goes down like this. Uh, that's pretty much how it stands. It would like maybe a wider gap in there so it could fit in there properly. I mean, there's a much wider gap on the underside, so I could hold it like this. <laughs> I mean, it, even that looks a little bit better, I think, but I guess I would have liked just a little bit more of a natural pose for that. And finally, let's take a look at the actual hands. We get a left and right staff holding pose. That's so hold the staff at an angle. We get two clenched fists to hold the base of the staff. We get two open palms to kind of do the whole whoa, dynamic pose, very martial arts inspired. Uh, these are nice, these are kind of a rubbery plastic. Uh, there's no real fear of anything breaking on these. And of course we do get that trigger finger as well. We only get the one hand done like this. There's nothing done for his left hand, it's just the right hand. Now let's take a look at the actual Sphinx mode itself. The paint apps on this are absolutely gorgeous. A really nice kind of brushed gold on here. And he is incredibly, incredibly solid. Uh, this thing is an absolute lump. Can't emphasize that enough. You can see some of the inner workings there. You can see some of the robot mode hinges. But it's a good sphinx mode it's pretty much identical to what we got in the show it was in the days when saban were doing the uh, megazords and power rangers saban also brought this across to the western market i mean just look at that that's that's ruddy brilliant isn't it now, as much as i love how this looks in the sphinx mode let's get him changed up into his robot mech mode uh, first port of action is to remove that base piece section and you want to come around to these shoulders and just bring those down on both sides really wonderful joints on this thing we can then bring the lower arms downwards and pull and extend flip the claws up to the back and there's this tab here this tab needs to be pushed down and as we push that down, we can bring the fists outwards and you can just pull all those fists and that's going to bring this tab out. And as you can see, the standard fists, which came with mine, they do have some paint rubbing just on that thumb area and on the base of the hand. Unfortunately, that is the same with both of those hands. I think they've been kind of tucked away in here and they, they must have just rubbed during transit. I mean, that's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Untab the Sphinx head. This whole piece is going to rock upwards and the head will come along with it. Bring that all the way over, straighten up that torso and then bring the Sphinx head backwards and that's just going to tab in either side of those shoulders. Push the crown section down. Coming down to the legs, we have a two tab system. We have this rear piece tabbed into these panels and then these panels themselves are tabbed into the back of the legs. Just untab all of those, and that now allows us to separate the legs and pull and extend those legs. Push the feet inwards and rotate them. And the tab which holds these two legs together in Sphinx mode, just pop that back on the inside of the leg. And here we have him fully transformed up into his mech mode. Oh, he's so good. Uh, he is such a fun toy. I mean, just look at how gorgeous that is as well. Incredible. The detailing, it's absolutely sublime. I love it. And there's just so much heft to him. I mean, I keep going on about his weight. He weighs 523 grams. That's 18.4 ounces. Now let's take a look at his articulation. The head, as you saw through the transformation, is on this pivot forwards and backwards. It's designed to be brought all the way forward. But if I find if you move it backwards slightly, you do get a greater range. We can go left and right. We can tilt side to side and we can look up and down. Uh, if we bring it forwards, we do hinder that up and downwards motion somewhat. Coming around to the shoulders, we can go up and down. Very, very tight ratchets. We can bring it 
upwards at the side and downwards again extremely tight ratchets there we've got a rotation at the elbow it can bend uh, kind of on a double jointed hinge there we do get a rotation on the wrist it's a ball mount so there's a little bit of play in there as well if you decide to just remove the back section we can actually get a bit of an abdominal crunch going on it's pretty much just designed for the transformation but it's nice to have a ratchet crunch in there you also have a really nice swivel on that torso as well we have hip skirts on the front back and sides which do allow for a very nice range of motion on the legs again on a very stiff ratchet they go all the way forwards and all the way back come out to the side we have an upper thigh rotation as well as a lower knee rotation and we get a nice 90 degree bend on that knee the feet can go up down left and right and of course pivot out to the side so with all that weight in the lower legs we can get some very nice dynamic kind of running agility inspired poses now one of my biggest gripes about this figure is the changing of the hands there's a small tab on the inside here getting the hands off is simple just apply a little bit of pressure give it a twist and it pops off this ball joint but to replace the hands you need to pop that back on that ball joint but as you do so it will push inwards and you really have to kind of press on the back here to stop that tab coming all the way back like so and then we can pull it back forwards and as you can see that's made a bit of a mess of my thumb uh, it's just a very strange method but hey who am i to complain i mean the figure looks insane and here we have him all kind of armored up with his bow staff uh, that's such a nice look for him there really is such a great range on this figure there's probably more range on him than was in the cartoon <laughs> but look at that that's an incredibly nice piece now it's not cheap and bear in mind if you're ordering from hobby link japan they don't mark their products down which is understandable because they have a business to run so what you pay is what you get that being said products like this are still a lot cheaper with hobby link and if you factor in your customs charges i like for this figure i think i paid 30 pounds extra on top which included the customs fees and the carriage charge the parcel force which is the courier in the uk they have to handle the figure anyway but yet if there's a customs charge they then stick their fee on top yeah not really sure uh, how that's legal but they do it anyway so just bear that in mind when ordering but i believe this guy's actually now in their sale as well and i can't recommend him enough he's an absolutely gorgeous piece he's so much fun and it really has hit a huge nostalgia buzz for me i mean i loved that show as soon as i got this figure in hand i was singing samurai pizza cuts <laughs> just google it just google it it was nonsense uh, but hey that was the 90s i mean even if you're not a samurai pizza cat fan just look at this guy's ability to pose with each of these hands you get different size uh, wrist ports so they sit further away from the hand which in turn allows you to do some really dynamic very natural poses now for you size junkies out there he stands about seven and a half inches from foot to the tip of his crown that's around 19 centimeters which is around the size of a large voyager or your masterpiece autobot cars now this is definitely a high-end collectible it's not designed for children and it's not exactly cheap but if you buy things like sentinel etc you know what you're paying for you pay for the licensing and you're paying for all of that die cast as well you can see one of the cats up there in the crown it's just the attention to detail i have included a trackable link below which takes you through to the hobby link japan page i hope you found this review useful i really hope they give us more 
of the Samurai Pizza Cat line. Uh, maybe some of the figures. They don't have to be this size. They can be smaller, but they don't make enough of these retro toys. Uh, this is something I loved as a kid, and it it's just great to have it in hand, albeit like 20 odd years too late. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, from myself and the ES Goken series, Near Goking Samurai Pizza Cats. Ah, good. Bye.